even though Luke in the first reading and John in the gospel differ in their dating of the coming of the Holy Spirit. For Luke, it happened 50 days after the resurrection. For John, it happened on Easter day. But both want to express the same thing, the same message. The risen Lord gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to his disciple and inaugurate the mission of the church. Prior to the coming of the Holy Spirit, the apostles were virtually living in hiding in the upper room. A great task has been entrusted to them, yet they had neither the strength nor the will to begin it. But after the coming of the Holy Spirit, they were completely new people, changed people. They left their hiding place and set out courageously to preach the gospel. The disciples were completely transformed by the Holy Spirit, transformed from people full of doubt and fear to witnesses full of courage and joy, even ready to sacrifice their own life. They were transformed from people hidden behind closed doors to people not afraid again to open wide doors and windows to welcome the fresh air of the Holy Spirit and making them able to go far and wide to the whole world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all nations. What was it that the Spirit did to them to be able to experience such a big change? In promising the Spirit, Jesus said to them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but to the end of the earth. I think the key words here is the word power. Power was precisely what the apostles need. At the moment they felt completely powerless, they needed courage. They needed someone to empower them. Empowerment is one of the in words nowadays, especially when we, Hong Kong people, feel more and more threatened by Beijing. But what does empowerment mean? It means to give ability to do something. It means to enable someone to do something. That usual sense of uh, the word empowerment certainly apply to the apostle at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit empowered them. He came down on them in the form of wind and fire. Wind and fire are symbol of power. Winds has the power to move, to uproot. Fire has the power 
to refine, to transform. When people are empowered, they become able and willing to take charge of their situation. They no longer wait for someone else to do it for them. They accept that they and they alone have to do something about it. At the Pentecost, the apostles were transformed, were empowered by the Holy Spirit. But it will be a mistake to think that the Holy Spirit did everything for them, or to think that the change in them came about in an instant. On Pentecost Day, the Holy Spirit came on the apostle as a facilitator. The Holy Spirit only awakened them to what was already inside them and release the hidden energy in them, helping them to grow. But growing and development is often a slow and painful process because change into the person does not come about instantly. Growth happens gradually. It is a unending process because we do not easily let go of our old ways, our old habits, our old attitude. Brother and sister, we also need today the coming down of the Holy Spirit to empower us so that we may be able to take charge not only of our personal life, but of the life of our community, of the life of our city, and live it responsibly. This means being willing to change what needs to be changed, to adjust to what needs to be adjusted. The power that changed the apostle at Pentecost is also available to us. What happened to the apostle that day can also happen to us now. The Holy Spirit will energize, will strengthen our spirit. He will harm warm and purify our hearts. And if we are really open to receive it, to welcome it, he will make us able to master a new language just as happened on Pentecost Day. The language of peace rather than of violence and destruction. The language of reconciliation rather than of conflict. The language of cooperation rather than of competition. The language of forgiveness rather than of vengeance. The language of hope rather than of despair. The language of tolerance rather of biased opinion or wrong belief. The language of friendship rather than of hostility. The language of unity rather than of division. The language of love rather than of hate. This new language product of the Holy Spirit in us and among us could give rise not only 
to a new Christian community, but also to a new Hong Kong. Come, Holy Spirit, enlighten us. Amen.